dear students in the previous session we have completed part 1 25 questions we have completed so in the second part we are going to start with the 26th question so the question we have here is conversion of larva into adult is called you know see they have asked what do we call the conversion of larva into adult as okay see four options have been given the first option we have is metagenesis see dear students let me tell you here metagenesis is an alternation of generation all right is alternation of generation that is between see asexual all right and sexual phases of an organism all right see an organism shows asexual form then sexual then asexual then sexual so this is called alternation of generation or metagenesis okay dear students let me give one example see a cilentarate you know we have like obelia which shows the alternation of generation so first one is not the answer for the question so let us move on to the second option which is given so it is given as metastasis see it is also not the option because see it means to say that the cancer spreads all right from one body part all right to the other body parts all right so that we need to take into consideration all right so metastasis is a condition where cancer spreads from one part of the body to the other part all right so that is also not the answer so let's next move on to the third one that is metamorphosis yes see larva until it forms an adult it will undergo many developmental changes all right that is what we call it to as metamorphosis and it is very apt for the question given below so we have to go for option 3 that is metamorphosis but they also have given one more option metamerism which we have already discussed students see let me tell you metamerism or you can also refer it to as segmentation all right where the body internally and externally is divided into segments or metameres all right so that is what we call it to as metamerism all right in the segmented worms we can find in a well defined manner the metamerism all right which is also not the option here so as i said you the conversion of larva into adult is metamorphosis please go for option 3 moving on to the next question radial symmetry is shown by four options have been given here so cilentorata tinophora echinodermata and all of the above see we know that radial symmetry means all right the organism can be divided into two equal halves from the any plane passing through the center that you remember so that is what we call it to as radial symmetry see the first option given here is cilentorata see cilentorata shows radial symmetry no doubt about it okay so tinophores see tinophores generally they show the radial symmetry but they also have bilateral symmetry but anyway they show radial symmetry so we have to consider that option as well 
and echinoderms as well so we are well familiar the best example here we all know the starfish okay which shows radial symmetry not only starfish and we have almost all the echinoderms which are radially symmetrical all right so under tinophora we can give for example we have bero all right or tinoplena okay or siloplena okay also you can give as an example tinoplena all right so all this all right under cylindrates let me give you for example we have hydra which is radially symmetric all right then under echinoderms as i said you starfish is the best example so anyway so all these three invertebrate phylums that is cylindrata tinophora and echinodermata show radial symmetry and the answer for this question is option 4 that is all of the above how many tentacles are found in hydra see we know about hydra that hydra belongs to an invertebrate phylum that is cylindrata all right and we also know that it is radially symmetric all right it shows radial symmetry correct so dear students okay so it also bears the tentacles all right see when you look at the structure of hydra all right the hydra is generally attached to the substratum all right and it has a mouth and from where arises many tentacles all right and it may also have bud okay so this is the bud of hydra and this is the mouth this 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 is the mouth okay and these are tentacles see tentacles in case of hydra ranges between 6 and 10 all right so as the eight comes under 6 and 10 we have to go for the option that is 4 okay see both 2 and 3 all right so the right answer is 4 moving on to the next question we have in sponges the middle layer in the body wall is called so four options have been given here the first option is mesophyll second is mesoglia then we have mesenchyme or both two and three these are the options which have been given so middle layer first of all let me tell you dear students that the primary germ layer okay that is mesoderm is absent with respect to the poriferans or the sponges it is absent instead of mesoderm all right there is mesenchyme all right there is mesenchyme or mesoglia both refers the same same here okay there is either mesenchyme or mesen uh, mesoglia okay so both these are gelatinous matrix so they form the gelatinous matrix in the Uh, in fact in the absence of uh, the primary germ layer they occupy okay so they form the matrix in fact it fills the space between see outer we have pinacoderm right the outer ectoderm or we can also refer it to as pinacoderm all right and inner we have coanoderm all right in between pinacoderm and coanoderm we have all right this gelatinous matrix called as mesenchyme or mesoglia all right mesophyll which is mentioned the first option are the cells which are generally present in the 
leaves of plant okay so the answer is both 2 and 3 okay go for option 4 The next question we have is nido blasts are used for C dear students nido blasts or we can also call them to as nematocysts these are the specialized cells where they are present they are present in the tentacles of all right cilentarates many cilentarates will have okay the nematocysts or the nidoblasts all right so and let me tell you that they have in them all right coiled okay venomous thread all right so this coiled venomous thread all right which is present in the nidoblasts can be in fact projected outside all right in self defense all right and it is also important to catch or the capture the prey and also for the attachment all right it is important so considering that it performs all these three roles that is capture of prey anchorage and defense we can go for option d the answer is here all of the above cold blooded animals are also called as there are options which are given ectotherm endotherms poikilothermic or both a 1 and 3 see dear students let me tell you that when we consider a cold blooded animal okay it can be also referred to as you know the poikilotherm or it can also be referred to as ectotherm all right so remember that see why i have mentioned that see these cold blooded animals you know for example like let us say we have fish or let us say for example reptile all right or amphibians so on okay which are cold blooded animals so what happens there you know their body temperature varies their body temperature fluctuates or varies all right with the temperature of the surroundings where they live so in that sense if we consider let me tell you dear students that you know cold blooded animals all right are also called as all right ectotherms as well as poikilotherms all right but endotherms are the organisms which are warm blooded in nature so for this question no the answer is very clear you have to go for option 4 that is both 1 and 3 so the next question we have here is in porifers the cells which line the spongio cell and the canals are okay so archaeocytes amebocytes coanocytes and pinacocytes are the given options let me tell you each one of them see dear students see when we are talking about archaeocytes let me tell you that these archaeocytes are also called you know generally the totipotent cells which are present in the sponges all right totipotent totipotent means a single cell you know can give rise to a whole you know organism right or it can differentiate to form all the organs of the particular uh, organism right so archaeocytes are the totipotent cells of sponges it can be seen in sponges all right then moving on to the next we have amebocytes dear students these are amoeba like cells 
all right so they are also present in sponges but alongside sponges they can also be seen in mollusks okay and all and also the starfish so remember this all right so amoebo sites then further we have coanocytes the third option see dear students coanocytes is the answer here these are the cells which line the spongocil all right and the canals so what is spongocil here let me tell you that spongocil is a large central cavity what it is large central cavity all right which can be seen in sponges all right so that is what we call spongocil so the cells which line the spongocil and the canals they are water canals okay so those cells are called as coanocytes okay so this is the right answer but let us also understand about the fourth option that is we have here is pinacocytes all right these pinacocytes are the flat cells these are flat cells okay found on the all right the outermost layer of sponges all right so they are present on the outermost layer which is the outermost layer as we all know pinacoderm all right so their pinacocytes are the cells okay so now as i said you the answer here is coanocytes which line the spongocil and the canals in case of sponges or poriferans next 33rd question we have here is metagenesis is seen in okay four options have been given again aurelia obelia adamsia both one and two are the options dear students see metagenesis is also called as alternation of generation okay so that means to say that an organism all right produces both sexual all right as well as asexual organisms all right all in alternate generations they keep alternating in one generation all right if it produces sexual form of organism in the another generation it produces asexual all right so that's where it is called as what alternation of generation okay let me say let, let us first go with the options now first option we have here is aurelia aurelia see this belongs to you know nidaria all right or it is called as a nidarian so let me tell you commonly aurelia is called as moon jellies okay then further to go with that let me tell you secondly we have it, you know obelia see obelia is a coelenterate it is a coelenterate and it shows alternation of generation or metagenesis all right so here obelia produces polyp and medusa so let me tell you polyp is the asexual phase all right of the coelenterate whereas medusa is the sexual phase of the coelenterates okay so alternation of generation that is asexual in one generation uh, in another generation sexual again it asexual again sexual like this alternatively polyp and medusa keep producing as in the case of 
Obelia, right? So the right answer here is op is option two. But we also have other option here that is Adamsia. Okay, let us also understand about it. Adamsia is also a Nidarian. Okay, and it also does not show the alternation of generation. All right, alternation of generation is not shown by. This Adamsia as well. Okay, the only organism here shows the metagenesis is Obelia. So answer is two. Thirty-fourth question we have is which pair of animals are similar to features mentioned? Okay, there are four options. Animals with features have been given. Okay, so we have to match the Correct one. All right. Now, first of all, let us understand, dear students, about the first option. That is, teropus. See, let me tell you, teropus is called as flying fox. All right. And it is. See, they have given teropus and ornithorhynchus as Viviparous animals, all right, but flying fox or teropus is oviparous. It is not viviparous. That's one thing, all right. Secondly, we have ornithorhynchus. Ornithorhynchus is nothing but platypus. So platypus is also, you know, it is generally egg-laying mammal. It lays egg. It is a mammal. Which lay eggs. Generally, mammals are viviparous in nature, but platypus and echidna are exceptions where we can find them as oviparous. So they lay eggs. All right. So hence, first option is not the correct one. Moving ahead, dear students, let me tell you about the garden lizard and crocodile. Both are reptiles. Garden li lizard has Three chambered heart. All right. So with two auricles and one ventricle. Whereas crocodile is the exception in case of reptiles, where all the reptiles generally they have three chambered heart, but crocodile has four chambered heart. All right. So that means it has two auricles and two. Ventricles, all right. So the given option is both have three chambered heart. So that is also wrong. Next, moving ahead, let us go for the third one. Ascaris and Ancyclostomata they have metameric segmentation. It is showing here. Okay. See, let me tell you, Ascaris is a round worm which does not have. Segmentation. We don't have the metameric, all right? Segmentation here, all right? Then to go with this, we have ancyclostoma, all right? So here, ancyclostoma belongs to ancyclostomata. It's a genus of nematodes. It is nematode, all right? Where, let me say, nematodes like what? Like Hookworms are included here. Hookworms, all right. So even ancyclostoma is included in the uh, ancyclostomata, all right. Now it also does not have the metameric segmentation. So they have given it shows metameric segmentation. So the given option is wrong. Then moving to the the last option, sea horse. And flying fish, they have given it as cold-blooded animals. See, seahorse or hippocampus. All right. Firstly, let me tell you, and as well as flying fish. Flying fish here, it is referred to as exocetid. All right. Both are Cold-blooded or pycelothermic animals. They both, in fact, have the ability to, in fact, 
चेंज देयर बॉडी टेम्परेचर अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर सराउंडिंग्स राइट सो इट इज़ द करेक्ट ऑप्शन विच इज गिवन सो यू हैव टू गो फॉर ऑप्शन फोर ऑप्शन फोर इज द राइट आंसर थर्टी फिफ्थ क्वेश्चन इज प्रोकोफोर लार्वा अकर्स इन कैटॉन नीरिस एफ्रोडाइट ऑल ऑफ दी एब आर दी ऑप्शन गिवन नाउ लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट डू वी मीन बाय प्रोकोफोर लार्वा हि ओके सो इट इज द टाइप ऑफ लार्वा विच इज फ्री स्विमिंग राइट फर्स्ट इज इट इज फ्री स्विमिंग एंड इट इज प्लैंगटोनिक टू गो विद दैट इट इज जनरली सर्वाइव्स इन मेराइन रीजन इट्स हैबिटेट इज मेराइन सो रिमेंबर इट्स फ्री लिविंग प्लैंगटोनिक एंड मेराइन लार्वा ऑल राइट इट इज वेरी स्मॉल एंड इट लुक्स वेरी मच ट्रांसपरेंट ओके और इट इज ट्रांसल्यूसेंट इन नेचर ओके सो इट हैज मेनी सिलिया इन इट्स बॉडी ऑल राइट दिस इज कॉल्ड एज ट्रोको फॉर लार्वा इट इज फ्री स्विमिंग ऑल राइट प्लैंगटोनिक मेराइन इट्स वेरी मच स्मॉल ट्रांसल्यूसेंट एंड इट हैज सिलिया over its body now let us understand trochophor larva occurs in the, the options okay now the options here given are first is chiton chiton is a marine mollusk okay so it survives in the in fact the marine water sea water okay so nearis which is given here it is generally marine nearis okay it's marine and generally it is annelid okay then dear students aphrodite we have okay aphrodite is also called sea mouse sea mouse because of its appearance and it is also marine and it is a polychaete worm all right polychaete worm all right so now or it belongs to annelid only okay it belongs to the phylum annelida okay so now let us let me tell you that out of these options okay we have to go for all the above okay answer is all the above chiton nereis and aphrodite all these organisms show troco for larva the next question we have is agnatha is represented by which class all right four options have been given cyclostomata chondrichthyes osteichthyes both 2 and 3 now let me tell you dear students you know see let us understand the classification here okay see phylum all right chordata is divided into three sub phylums all right the first sub phylum is euro chordata second phylum is cephalo chordata and the third phylum is vertebrata all right and further vertebrata is classified into two in fact divisions all right the first division is agnatha and the second division is nathostomata okay so we have two divisions all right now agnatha has only one class that is called as class cyclostomata all right and further nathostomata has two super classes all right that is 
spices super class spices all right and next tetrapods these are again divided see spices is divided into chondrichthys or the in fact cartilaginous fishes and osteichthys that is bony fishes and tetrapods are divided into four classes amphibia reptilia apes and mammalia now dear students now let us see the question here agnatha is represented by which class see it is represented by the class cyclostomata as you can observe here in the given uh, the you know picture or uh, the given classification you can very easily say that agnatha has uh, one class that is cyclostomata all right furthermore the chondrichthys are the in fact marine animals they have streamlined body and cartilaginous fishes which we already know osteichthys are bony fishes all right they have bony endoskeleton body is streamlined there can be both marine and fresh water all right so here the answer we have to go for is one that is cyclostomata alligator is the member of okay four options have been given the first is pisces aves is the second option to go with reptilia and amphibia all right now let me tell you that the alligator and crocodile are the reptiles all right they both are relatively similar okay so what difference do we find with respect to alligator and crocodile let us understand okay see alligator has long armored body okay first point okay they have thick scales or bony plates on their body second point okay these uh, bony plates are called as scutes all right then they have short powerful legs all right and they have a long snout fourth point long snout snout here represents the projecting nose and mouth of an animal so it will include the nose and mouth all right so now this is about alligator alligators have generally see u shaped faces u shaped faces they have all right now let me say few aspects about crocodile crocodile will in fact see has v shaped v shaped body okay and in fact when compared with uh, alligator all right it is having you know the v shaped we you know muscles or mouth that's a major you know difference with that itself we can say the difference between the alligator and the uh, crocodile but crocodile dear students here remember is also having you know powerful legs it also has bony plates on its body okay its body is also long but when it comes to their faces u shaped face can be seen with respect to alligator and v shaped muzzle or mouth all right or face can be seen with respect to crocodiles all right so uh, these are the aspects okay fine now we know that alligator belongs to reptilia it is similar to crocodile okay go for option 3 dear students moving on to the next question question number 38 in osteichthys how many pairs of gills are present all right so now first of all let me tell you that osteichthys are also called to as the bony fishes all right their endoskeleton is made up of bones that's why they are referred to as bony fishes and 
they have streamlined body they can be present in both marine habitats as well as fresh water habitats all right now when we consider osteichthyes generally you know generally we have six pairs of gills in them for example rohu rohu katla katla okay so most of them have generally six pairs of gills so please go for the option 4 that is 6 segmentation of body is first observed in the which phylum they are asking okay so all the invertebrate phylums have been given here option 1 is platyhelminthes to go with ascalminthes is the second option then anelida third option and fourth option we have here is arthropoda all right students now see segmentation or metamerism we already know see segmentation or metamerism is internal and externally internally as well as externally the organism is divided into segments or metameres that's what we call segmentation okay this segmentation for the very first time appeared in annelids all right so this point you note down then further let me tell you that the segmentation is the fundamental characteristic of annelids is the most important characteristic feature of the invertebrate phylum annelid okay so we they have metameres or segments in the externally and internally in their body now that's one aspect okay so first it was observed with respect to annelid so you have to go for option 3 but also let us understand the other options in case of platyhelminthes we don't find the segmentation at all and secondly in case of ascalminthes they are circular in cross section and they also are unsegmented they also don't have segmentation so then fourth option we have arthropods okay let me tell you that arthropods have segmented bodies like annelid worms all right but these segments they become specialized okay so they you know with one pair each segment will have one pair of appendage generally all right one pair of appendage so appendage what is appendage here appendage represents the projection which arises from the body the hair like or bezel like structure all right so in each segment you can find that in case of arthropods anyway for the very first time it was observed in annelida so go for option 3 40th question we have here is c pen is physelia adamsia penatula gorgonia so considering this let me tell you each one of them first let us discuss about physelia see physelia is also called as the portuguese man of war all right so remember this all right or it can also be called to as blue bottle or floating terror all right dear students so in three ways we can represent physelia so portuguese man of war or blue bottle or floating terror so it is marine organ is a marine animal it is all right so why it is called as portuguese man of war or in general we say that was man of war why do we call as such see it has a gas filled bladder or pneumatophore what you call okay gas filled bladder or all right it has pneumatophore all right so in fact this gas filled bladder or pneumatophore sits above the water so this sits above the water and that looks as if a old warship 
is at full sail all right so how they go for war you know in the ocean all right it in the similar manner the gas filled uh, bladder or nematophore you know looks like as such that's why it is uh, got its name all right portuguese man of war all right so it is not sea pen okay so answer first pizelia is not the answer here so next let us move on with the second option that is adamsia see adamsia is a species of sea anemone all right sub species of sea anemone all right so it uh, belongs to see all the organisms which have been given here all belong to nidaria all right phylum nidaria remember that okay so adamsia is generally a species of sea anemone next we have pennatula see uh, sea pen is actually pennatula all right why it is called pennatula because they have feather like appearance all right they have feather like appearance all right so which looks like you know antique quill pens you know very long before people used the antique quill pens all right it looks like that you know so its feathers look like that hence uh, the name it is given as what sea pen it is a marine animal belonging to the phylum nidaria all right so answer is pennatula you have to go for option 3 also let us understand about the other option gorgonia see gorgonia is called as sea fan why is it called as sea fan dear students see it actually looks like a plant sea fan looks like a plant but in fact it is a animal let let me tell you that all right it looks like a plant but it is animal see animal it in its body it has forked branches like plants that's where it is called as sea fan forked branches or like a fan how it has forks in the similar manner it has forked branches in its body that's why it has got its name as sea fan all right so now let me tell you that physelia is called portuguese man of war or blue bottle or floating terror adamsia is referred here as a species of sea anemone pennatula is actually the sea fan gorgonia is sorry pennatula is sea pen and gorgonia is sea fan so answer here sea pen is pennatula option is 3 41st question we have here is which one belongs to mollusca all right so mollusca are the soft bodied invertebrate marine animals okay so under that which organism belongs we have to choose so four options have been given let us start with the last option that is first let us go with jelly fish see jelly fish belongs to generally the class nidaria and it is a marine invertebrate animal all right these animals don't have bones they are animals with without bones animals without bones okay so fine that's one thing and uh, it does not belong to mollusca silver fish so when we consider silver fish it is very small all right and i can say it is a wingless insect it is a wingless insect it is not belonging to the phylum mollusca it belongs to arthropoda okay which has a class called insecta under that silver fish is included see it has got its name as silver fish because of its silvery light gray color then the next we have dog fish see here several small sharks all right belonging to the class chondrichthyes all right are included here all right children so now this belongs to the phylum chordata all right dog fish belongs to the phylum chordata then we have devil fish 
devil fish is the correct answer see devil fish is generally called as commonly called as you know it is the common name actually and uh, in fact it is the octopus octopus in general or in common is referred to as devil fish so as we all know octopus belongs to mollusca all right so please go for option 1 devil fish or octopus both are same so which belong to the phylum mollusca 42nd question we have here is which of the following animal belongs to the class crustacea all right see let me tell you firstly we are talking here about crustacea so crustacea is the sub phylum all right actually it is a sub phylum it is actually the in the question it is mentioned as that but it is actually a sub phylum of the uh, arthropoda phylum anyway so first we have mosquito see mosquito dear students it is it is all see mosquito prawn grasshopper and cockroach all are here arthropods they belong to the phylum arthropoda but they have different classes now let us understand each one of them see firstly we have mosquito so mosquito belongs to the class insecta all right so secondly prawn or cyclops belongs to the class or sub phylum crustacea we generally say it to as the sub phylum okay then we have grasshopper which belongs to again the class insecta all right then cockroach also belongs to the class insecta all right see crustacea below is a what i can say i said this instead of class you can write down here sub phylum crustacea is a sub phylum all right so now let me tell you then which is the class sir? you can ask me so here class is malaco malaco straca class is malaco straca all right so remember that all right so answer so if you consider sub phylum crustacea all right the answer we have to go for here is cyclops or prawn which come under the class malaco strata and sub phylum crustacea dear students 43rd question we have here is what is common between ostrich penguin and kiwi see are they running birds or migratory birds or flightless birds or four toed birds now here you know it's a bit uh, critical question actually it seems seem to be a easy but it is critical question let me tell you why see when we consider firstly ostrich okay so ostrich is a large flightless bird it does not fly okay one aspect it's a flightless bird native to many large areas of africa all right so it has the ability to run so we can say also as what it has the running bird all right then furthermore let me tell you we need to also consider that generally they don't migrate they do not migrate all right see here this is one aspect all right so as they don't migrate no all this you know they have to be one common character there has to be let us understand so it is a flightless bird it can run and they generally don't migrate only in case there is a scarcity of food they may but generally they don't migrate all right then children we have secondly penguin all right so this is also flightless bird but it is aquatic in nature so we call this as aquatic flightless bird all right 
aquatic flightless bird it is all right so generally in the southern hemisphere we can find more of penguins so here firstly i it is a flightless bird okay then second it is adapted for swimming all right but it cannot run it can it cannot run but it can what i can say walk with st- short steps that walking with short steps can be also referred to as waddling all right so waddling is shown by the penguins all right uh, children okay so that is one thing and generally they don't migrate but emperor penguins the bigger penguins called emperor penguins they do migrate okay anyway that's the one option here next let us also talk about one more uh, you know bird here that is kiwi so kiwi is a, also a flightless bird all right so it is endemic to new zealand when i say endemic that means it is particular to only that region only in new zealand it can be found and let me tell you dear uh, students that these uh, kiwi no generally they are adapted for running as they are flightless they run all right they can run as fast as human actually all right or humans rather okay so it is a uh, kiwi is also regarded as the national bird of new zealand all right then kiwis generally don't migrate they also don't migrate now let us understand uh, how many toes these birds have all right see ostrich when we consider firstly see ostrich has two toes all right then moving on to penguin penguin has generally three toes and kiwi has okay so when we consider kiwi four toes are present dear students all right so which is different ostrich has two penguin has three kiwi has four we cannot say all these are four toed animals as the fourth option which is given so see when we look at 43rd question as i said all the animals are flightless birds all right few of them can migrate few of them may not migrate all right few of them may uh, be adapted for swimming few of them may be adapted for running all right so as such okay dear students so the there are you know the correct option all three you know are flightless birds so go for option 3 the next question we have here is which is not detectable in birds see four options have been given pectoral girdle all right secondly pelvic girdle to go with four limbs and hind limbs see in case of birds that is the third option four limbs are not detectable why because these four limbs are modified into modified into wings all right so they they are not detectable in birds okay so we have to this is a direct question so please go for option 3 option 3 is the correct answer the last question under level 1 is which is not a homeotherm see here homeotherm refers to warm blooded animals it refers to warm blooded animals or endotherms all right which generally you know do not change their body temperature when they move to different environments they have the ability to regulate or control their internal body temperature so those type of organisms are referred to as warm blooded animals see four options have been given here the first option we have is aptenodites see aptenodites are the great penguins all right 
so they belong to aves okay birds they are birds all right the class aves they belong to and they are birds next moving on to the second option we have testudo see testudo is a species of mediterranean tortoises all right so this testudo you know belongs to class reptilia hence it is a reptile all right then next let us move on to the third option that is delphinus see delphinus is common dolphins they are they are common dolphins so these are mammals all right next we have one more that is neophron so it is called as egyptian vulture all right so this egyptian vulture belongs to the class a so it is also a bird now let me tell you dear students among these four options the more appropriate answer is testudo testudo is a reptile and it is warm blooded among all the other three no are cold blooded or pycloderms only testudo here is a homeotherm or warm blooded animals so go for option 2 dear students next let us move on to level 2 questions under animal kingdom all right so here first question we have is when body cavity is not lined by mesoderm all right so that means the primary germ layer mesoderm is absent here so instead of mesoderm all right the scattered pouches all right are present between the ectoderm and endoderm so such a body cavity is called as is the question so four options have been given whether it is called as coelom or true coelom or pseudo coelom or ea coelom we need to here check okay let me draw a diagram and uh, explain you see what they are saying it has the ectoderm all right so we have drawn the ectoderm all right then endoderm so this is the endoderm all right so this is the inner primary germ layer now instead of mesoderm all right mesoderm is in fact here divided into scattered pouches all right like this all right if there is a presence of the scattered pouches like this all right these are the scattered pouches dear students all right scattered pouches so remember these are the scattered pouches so here this type of you know what we can say the body cavities rather the outer ectoderm inner endoderm and the scattered pouches in place of mesoderm if they are present we call them to as pseudo coeloms we call them to as pseudo coeloms and these pseudo coelomate you know uh, animals belong to the phylum ascelminthes the only phylum the only invertebrate phylum rather which shows the pseudo coelomate animals is ascelminthes all right so please go for option 3 it is the right answer the second question under level 2 we have is which of the following is a pseudo coelomate see dear students i have already told you that the organisms instead of having the primary germ layer mesoderm they have 
in the mesoderm that middle layer in that space the scattered pouches so i told you that can be seen with respect to the phylum ascalminthes almost all the organisms belonging to the phylum ascalminthes show pseudocoelom in them so let us now identify which are the here ascalminthes organisms so the first option we have here is ascaris and ucheraria see ascaris is a round worm we know that it's a round worm all right then secondly we have ucheraria see ucheraria is called as filarial worm all right so both causes disease see as caries causes a disease called ascariasis and the ucheraria or filarial worm causes elephantiasis or filariasis okay both belong to ascalminthes so here first option itself is correct so that is ascaris and ucheraria see and cyclostoma here secondly let me tell you about that also they are hook worms all right they are hook worms then enterobias is a pin worm all right then we have dranunculus dranunculus is called as guinea worm all right then to go with that finally we also have loa loa all right so this loa loa causes loa filariasis okay it's a i worm in general we say i worm all right so among the given options the two ascalminthes organisms are ascaris and ucheraria and the answer is 1 third question we have here is larval stage is found in four options have been given here vertebrates invertebrates both 1 and 2 and none of the above the organisms which show larval stages have indirect development that we know all right they have indirect development all right now here vertebrates have larval stages in them few of them let us say class amphibia has all right or the animals amphibians belonging to the class amphibia have tadpole larva which is a vertebrate okay okay let me give example for invertebrate as well say for example in case of invertebrate let us consider larva as planula all right most of the phylum show here as well but let us say planula planula is a larva which can be seen in nidarians all right annelids mollusks as well as crustaceans and so on all right so here larval stage is present in both vertebrates as well as the invertebrates so we need to go for the option 3 that is both 1 and 2 next we have organisms which give birth to young ones are called all right this is a direct question without any hesitation you can just frame the answer in your mind and tick okay the organisms which give birth to young ones are called viviparous all right see examples you can give for viviparous are you can give human beings all right all right or you can give other mammals as well like cows all right dogs and so on all right all these are the organisms which directly give birth to young ones then okay we have oviparous here so oviparous are the organisms which lay eggs all right say for example we have frogs we have different types of snakes all right then we have lizards all right then to go with that even we have ducks fishes all right penguins octopus all these are what oviparous animals so please understand that dear students so next ovo viviparous animals so what are these ovo viviparous animals 
see these animals are intermediate between oviparous and viviparous first of all let me tell you they don't have the new okay the tissue which is an important tissue for supplying nutrition for elimination of waste for supplying oxygen and so on that is placenta is absent here with respect to ovo viviparous animals so what actually happens here let me tell you see here embryos all right in fact develop inside the x they develop inside the x but let me tell you they in fact remain few of them remain in the mother's body all right embryos develop in the x but still few of them remain in the mother's body until they are ready to hatch okay or in simple sense let me tell you you know mother here in case of ovo viviparous animals does not provide nutrition for the developing embryo so the yolk at the expense of yolk by utilizing the yolk as nutrition the organism or the animals here grow so that's what we call ovo viviparous okay dear students examples for ovo viviparous let us uh, now understand that you know some of the rays all right snakes all right some snakes also earth boa okay and to go with that even some sharks all right all these show ovo viviparity or they are ovo viviparous animals so these are the other options which i have explained to you but the answer for the given question is the animals which give birth to young ones are viviparous animals so go for option 2 match the columns 1 and 2 and choose the correct combination from the options given so towards the left hand side column 1 has been given towards right hand side column 2 has been given so let us understand this question so let us match first we have cyclostomes cyclostomes is a class all right so this class in fact comes under the division agnatha all right so this is the first thing we need to note down secondly the class apes all right come under the tetrapods all right tetrapoda is a super class all right then we have tunicates all right tunicates are the organisms okay they are marine invertebrate animals they have a subphylum called tunicate uh, tunicata all right so fine it is also certain times called as urochordata all right dear student so we have discussed about urochordata already so anyway so these animals in fact if i want to tell you you know are having a part of the chordate you know what we call the notochord rather and the nerve cords only in the dorsal side of the body so that is what the urochordates are okay so fine so tunicates belong to are nothing but they are also called as urochordates fine then we have belenoglossus see belenoglossus is a hemichordate all right it belongs to the phylum hemichordata so it is a interlink between it's a connection between okay vertebrates and invertebrates i mean to say hemichordata fine then finally we have the ostic thighs see ostic thighs is a class under the super class pisces so the answer here is 4 okay A matches with R, B with T, C with Q, D with P, and E with S. So go for option four as your answer. Next question we have here is which of the following is not a deuterostome? We have already discussed about the deuterostomes and protostomes. Here, deutero means second. All right. and stoma means mouth all right that means to say 
second mouth all right or there is formation of anal opening first okay before the formation of mouth all right those type of organisms are called deuterostomes so here echinoderms all right and the chordates are referred to as deuterostomes they are the you no know, organisms which belong to higher you know phylums they are developed organisms in uh, echinoderm is a invertebrate uh, phylum but uh, much developed than compared to the other invertebrate phylums chordate is a vertebrate okay uh, it uh, it has a notochord presence sorry it has a presence of notochord now let us understand firstly about the sea star see dear students sea star is a echinoderm all right so we need to identify that which is not a deuterostome we need to identify identify which is proteostome or sorry the protostomes protostomes means there is formation of mouth first later anus that we need to identify which is shown by primitive organisms anyway sea star is a echinoderm so it is a deuterostome and it is not the answer secondly sea urchin all right sea urchin is a deuterostome because it is also a echinoderm all right it uh, sea urchin see let us let me tell you that it looks like a ball of spines sea urchin looks like a ball of spines so echinoderm sea fan sea fan is a nidarian all right it's a nidarian so make a note here so nidarian is a primitive invertebrate phylum and it is a protostome all right here there is formation of mouth first for later followed by the formation of anal opening all right sea fan is the correct answer here because it does not uh, you know uh, show the formation of uh, anal opening first okay so it is a it is not a deuterostome sand dollars all right the next option we have so it is also echinoderm all right they have flattened disc like body okay that's why they are referred to as sand dollars okay echinoderms they are also echinoderm so as i said you echinoderms are deuterostomes so in this question we need to identify which is not a deuterostome sea star sea urchin and sand dollars are echinoderms these options are eliminated sea fan is not a deuterostome it is a proteostome so we have to go for option 3 dear students seventh question we have here is pentaradial symmetry occurs in okay see it's a type of radial symmetry pentaradial symmetry is a type of radial symmetry okay so where which is a characteristic of we can say the higher invertebrate phylum that is the echinoderms all right so here the body parts are arranged in five rays of symmetry say for example we have here all right a star all right so this star is arranged you know it is having pentaradial symmetry dear students all right so it is arranged in five rays of symmetry the best example we can give is starfish all right so this one aspect that means what pentaradial in simple sense if i want to tell you see uh, the organism is in five parts around the central axis that's what is pentaradial symmetry okay fine so the answer here without doubt we have to go for echinoderm itself arthropods molluscans and annelids they show bilateral symmetry where body can be divided into two equal ha halves from only single plane passing through the center so please go for option 1 open circulatory system occurs in all right first let us understand what do we mean by open circulatory system see it is open circulation all right so the blood is here not enclosed by 
okay they are not enclosed by the blood vessels all right so and in fact let me tell you the blood is pumped into a body cavity called as hemocil all right if that is the case we call that to as open circulatory system so in here four options have been given first is earthworm all right so earthworm has in fact closed circulatory system where the blood flows inside the blood vessels that that is arteries veins and capillaries now coming to the second option snail see snail has open circulatory system and also the cockroach has open circulatory system so where the blood flows in the hemocil okay so all the organs are bathed in the uh, hemocil you know uh, which has the blood go for option 4 both 2 and 3 the next question we have is which of the following is acylomate see here acylomate refers to absence of all right body cavity they don't have the body cavity at all all right those types are referred to as acylomates so here four options have been given the first is echinodermata then caudata platyhelminthes and both one and two see echinoderms and the caudates they have true body cavity all right and platyhelminthes as we all know are dorso ventrally flattened organisms where we don't find the body cavity at all all right between the body wall and the gut so we have to go for option 3 all right that is platyhelminthes organisms they don't have the body cavity at all they are u sorry they are a filomates dear students the last question for this session is a body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is called all right so we have four options hemocil pseudocil blastocil and coelom let us understand each one of them see what do we mean by hemocil see it is a primary body cavity all right of invertebrates it is a primary body cavity of invertebrate animals or invertebrates all right so they have circulatory fluid in the hemocil like generally like blood secondly we have pseudocil see pseudocil it is not lined with a well defined mesodermal membrane so we are talking here about a body cavity which should lined by mesoderm we need to identify so pseudocil does not have all right well defined a proper okay mesoderm lining all right mesodermal lining is not proper here all right next so we ca- we have to eliminate that option as well we have third option as blastocil so what is blastocil here c or we can also refer this to as blastocyst cavity the fluid filled cavity which we can find in blastula all right uh, 32 or 64 cell stage embryo we call as blastula there we have a fluid filled cavity all right called as blastocil all right so that is also not the option the fourth option here we have is coelom all right so the coelom is lined by mesoderm the hemocil pseudocil and the blastocil are not lined by mesoderm so please go for the option 4 that is coelom